Sam Logue here for irishboxing.com. Absolutely delighted to be joined by the diva himself, Gary Cully. We're two days out from the fight, Gary. You're going to fight Miguel Vasquez, the former IBF lightweight champion. Um, we spoke him before. We spoke a few weeks ago. It's obviously it's a big step up, but um, you look like you're you're on weight. You're feeling good. Talk to me about how you're feeling at the moment and how the weight's going, and just generally how you're how you're feeling approaching this fight on Saturday. I feel a million dollars, man. I'm better than him in every in every department, so I believe I'll show that on Saturday night. It's great to hear you speaking so confidently, and especially that 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 sense that you don't really see it as a step up, and it is a step up in class in terms of opponent, but you don't you're not seeing it that way because you're just approaching it as if it's any other fight. I think that's really beneficial. Yeah. But one thing I wanted to say was, what what six foot? I mean, first of all, there are no six foot two lightweights. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Yeah, yeah. Like. What six foot plus six foot plus lightweight? If there are any other in the world, please get in touch with IrishBoxing.com because we want to we want to find out who you are. What co- kind of? <laughs> 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 what? How on earth are you able to eat two days out? Like as in eat like a full meal the day before the weigh-in? Just on a side note, there, like as you were saying at the start, no disrespect to Miguel Vasquez. This is a step up. Yeah. It's the best opponent I've faced in my yeah. career so far. But I'm. T- my stride yeah. I believe I am on course to win world titles in the very near future so these are the fights that I need to take I don't see it as a massive step up in class for me because I know where I can operate at so yeah. that's what I mean by that yeah, yeah. Um, as far as the weight I've literally just been sitting with my manager there and uh, he's gasping looking at me going how how are you doing that what why I was just did a little light session there I was bang on the weight so I said look I'm going to sleep off a pound or two tonight. I'm full of water. Um, grab a bit of dinner. I'll have breakfast before the weigh-in tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, every, everything is fresh, man. Everything's sweet. So, yeah. I don't know how I do it, to be honest with you. Um, I only said to Stephen there in an interview a second ago, I only checked my weight for this fight probably three weeks ago. I don't step on the scales all year round. I don't look at the scales all year round. I train. I live the lifestyle. Um I'm in the gym six, five, six days a week, twice a day, because that's just my lifestyle. That's where my friends are. That's where I network. That's my hobby. That's what I do. It makes me feel good. So I'm in the gym. I like to. I pride myself on being well conditioned. I like to think that I'm the best conditioned athlete in Ireland. I'm one of the best conditioned athletes in the world. So um, that's why my weight is always kind of it's it it's steady all year round. I keep myself in good shape. Um, I got on. I got on the scales. Like I said, for the first time, three weeks out from this fight, I know by what I feel when I'm sparring, when I'm how I'm sparring, how I feel when I'm sparring, how I feel when I'm training, that my weight is right. I don't need to look at scales. I know my body well enough by now, so I don't get fat. I enjoy my food, but I don't get fat and get out of shape in between camps. Um, and yeah, the weight cut started last Saturday for this. So I got on. I got on the scales the first time three weeks ago. The weight cut starts a week out. I'm sitting here six days later on weight, ready to rock. Myself and Niall, who is part of your team, Niall Barrett, we were chatting and I was just saying to him, and I was scratching my head like that, like when you were saying all that, I'm just kind of scratching my head going, it's, it's not, it's, it's inexplicable, like it's not, you are a complete anom- anomaly, anomaly is the word, sorry, you are a complete anomaly, like how, how is it physically possible, like I, I, we chatted about four or five weeks ago, right, in the gym, and your arms were, I'm about 90 kilos, right? I mean, I'm a bit fat, but I'm 90 kilos. Yeah, and your arms are bigger than mine. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's 90's, right. 90's normal, yeah. <laughs> you, look, you look well to me, I think, tonight. Thanks, no? bro. Yeah. Thanks very much. It's a black shirt hiding yeah, the weight, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I'm at 10 pounds as well, as by the way, yeah? yeah. So. <laughs> so imagine Gary even skinnier than what he is now, yeah? But, like, I was just, think, I was just talking to Niall, and it's just like, where, like, your arms were bigger than mine. Like, you're, you're mu- you have muscle. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't understand. I f- literally don't understand where the weight goes or how you're actually not. Like I said, to, I said to Noel, Gary must be walking around at like light heavyweight kind of weight. And he said, 
you walk around five to seven pounds yeah. over the yeah. lightweight limit, yeah. like year long, year round. I'm about one four, yeah, one forty five, which is ten pounds over 10 pounds, all year that's round. Um, but I think I'm a bit of a myth. Like I don't really know people. <laughs> people kind of like look at me as a bit of like a, yeah, like a myth. They're like they it's see the. Like you're like a folk legend or yeah, something. Like you know I'm, I mean? I'm squatting over 100 kilos. I'm deadlifting 150 kilos. I'm benching 75 kilos. And I'm running 15 minute 5Ks. Like, do you know what I mean? And then I'm making this way. I'm punching fucking hard, man. And people are just like... There's actually a guy. He's training in the gym at the moment. In Niall's gym. And he does like prep for people. You know, the prep coaches. And he, I think he's he does a bit of uh, competi- competing on stage himself. And he says, like, I study numbers and body composition and everything all year round, and that's my job. He doesn't make sense, he said to me, like that. I look at him and he actually doesn't make sense. Yeah. I think I'm just one of a kind, freak of nature. And uh, like <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm, I'm fit as a fiddle. I'm running 15 minute 5Ks. I'm squatting. It, it's, I could understand running the 15 minute 5Ks if I couldn't squat 50 kilos. But I can squat over 100 kilos. I can deadlift 150 kilos. My strength is up here. My fitness is also up here and I'm sparring sparring light heavyweights sparring cruiser weights sparring mm-hmm. middleweights spar Paul Ryan two three days a week he punches hard um, I'm in with him I'm mixing it with all these lads and not a bother to me do you know what I mean so I'm just built to fight I think <laughs> I think I genuinely am my body's built to fight um, and yeah that's it's it's just what it is <laughs> thankfully enough for me I, I love it but yeah um, with all that in mind Gary how far do you see yourself going, particularly in the lightweight division? Because you're talking about maybe the best division in the world. Yeah, definitely. Lomachenko, Cambosis, Devin Haney, Jorge Linares. Lom- Did I say Lomachenko? We're missing someone, right? Garcia, Tank. Tank Davis, uh, Ryan Garcia, right? That's the t- probably the top consensus, top yeah, six yeah. or seven, whatever that was. Do you see yourself as just being uh, not only like as a boxer a brilliant boxer but just physically in terms of as a, the specimen you are everything and considering everything we just said about kind of the anomaly that you are physically do you just see yourself as too much for these guys when you get to that level in two or three fights time that you're just they're not going to be able to handle you yeah I think physically I think presence in the ring is a big thing and like people see a six foot two southpaw and they'll say a lightweight and say ah He's going to box in the back foot. He's going to keep it long. I'm walking towards you for 12 rounds to fight. So when you see somebody towering over you like that, and they're not running away from you, they're coming to fight, they're towering over you, and they're six inches, eight inches taller than you, and they're coming to fight, and they can bang. Um, I think it's quite intimidating for people. And, yeah, I believe condition-wise, fitness-wise, and then... When you mix in with that, the boxing skill set, I only started out with the boxing skill set. This only in the past two or three years I've developed the strength. I've grown into a lightweight. If you've seen a photo of me, I've fought at lightweight since I started out uh, professional boxing, 2017, so five years at lightweight now. If you've seen a photo of me from my debut to a photo of me on the scale tomorrow when I get into the ring on Saturday night, it's two completely different people. Yeah. So um, I've matured into the way. And I believe I'm a big presence in the ring as well. It's not just strength, or it's not just it's not just height. It's actually yeah. it's it's I'm towering over you. I'm I'm walking towards you, and it's it's yeah. quite suffocating in the ring as well when you have that coming towards you for twelve rounds. You know. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's kind of uh, the the word that came to mind there for me was claustrophobic. Mm. You almost make it kind of claustrophobic for them in there, like they've nowhere to go, they've no time to get their bearings or to have a breath or whatever because you're just so because you're so big and, and you're nimble you can get close to them fast I've got long limbs too but yeah. you can you can run away then if you want but if you run away I'll outbox you for 10 rounds so I've got the skill set to do that but if you want to fight alright then let's go to, let's go to war you know and I had to work on that because in the amateurs I was tall but I never had the physical strength so mm. I was always keeping people long and boxing for Ireland throughout the years I was told keep it long keep it long all the time and if somebody got in close to me, which it's boxing, it's going to happen. People are going to break the distance at times. You need to learn how to fight in close. So um, now I, I believe I've learned that and I can mix my skill set with, with the physical power, with the physical presence. And I believe I have got everything now. So um, whatever way a fight goes, I can deal with it. I'm, I'm so versatile when I'm in there that 
if somebody wants to run away and try and have a boxing match, yeah, okay, we'll do that. If you want to go to war, let's go to war, but I can beat you whatever way, so I'm confident in, in both styles. 100%. So, with, with kind of with all that in mind, as you approach a fight like Miguel Vasquez, we did talk a little bit about it earlier on. How do you... You know, it's, it's it's sometimes a difficult question because, you know, I'm not trying to ask you to give away the game plan and I know you're not going to want to, but how do you approach uh, that kind of fight? You know, you have a style in Miguel Vasquez who he's typically kind of a, a back foot runner, nice and bouncy, nimble on his feet, doesn't like to stand and trade too much, likes to jab off, you know, he likes to move and jab off the movements and, you know, he doesn't really stand still a lot. How do you kind of approach a guy like that and what do you see... Uh, what are your advantages going into this fight that you see will will bring you the victory? Being me, I believe I actually don't have a game plan for this fight. I really? was saying to Pete last night, I feel a bit strange. We don't really, we do have a game plan. Like we we work on things in the gym, and since my last fight, we've developed my skill set, and we know what sort of style we're bringing into the fight. But I'm comfortable that I'm able to adapt when I'm in there and. Miguel Vasquez is 55 fights he's a former world champion he could come with 3 or 4 different styles on the night so I don't really know if he's going to Lewis Rich and beat him probably shouldn't have beat him and he was using back foot boxing then so is he going to say that didn't work for me the last time let's stand with him but I'm confident in, in my ability that whatever he does I can adapt to what he does and I can beat him whatever way it is so I think just being myself um, and being able to adapt and staying, staying sharp in there um, but yeah, like I said, it, it's it's just having confidence in what we do in the gym, confidence in myself, confidence in my ability, but ultimately being able to adapt because going through the levels, I'm going to have to face all styles and after three rounds, a guy might have a, a game plan that's not working out, he changes his game plan. You have to adjust when you're in there as well, so yeah, um, you have to be able to do a little bit of everything, I believe, in there. I believe Miguel Vasquez is going to come and be quite negative. Um, he's obviously doesn't like to trade at the best of times, but he's obviously studied my last couple of fights then and saying, okay, he's explosive early. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get tangled into a war with him early on. So I, I believe he's, uh, he's gonna start quite negative. He'll probably move backwards, try and tie me up, try and be awkward like he does. But um, going through the rounds, I see me picking up the pace, him kind of falling down a little bit mm. and um, as I go through the gears I don't think he'll be able to sta- stick it with me if he does he does and I'll win the 10 rounds but um, I believe as I as I start going through the gears I don't think he'll, he'll stick in there yeah I get what you mean so um, if you win this fight I was trying to think of the right word there to sound fancy but I can't remember if you win if you win this fight what What's next for you? What What do you want next? And and how quickly do you want to progress towards those? I suppose now for you it's about that world title, right? But could there be say a, a European title? Like what kind of route do you want to take? And how quickly do you want to move on? Um, all being, uh, albeit you win on uh, Saturday. I want to move on as quick as possible. And I've, since I've started out, I've said that, that I wanted to. From my debut, I was calling for the Irish title. And it didn't. It took me ten fights to get there. We were looking for after four fights, five fights, offering the Victor Rabois and the Noel O'Connors, Paul Hoylands, Joe Fitzpatrick, every lightweight in Ireland after three, four fights because I knew I was above that level. So I wanted to move quite quick. Joe, thankfully enough, had the balls to step out, take the fight. I proved that I was above that level. Moved on to the ranking belts. Took Kitochikov who. Fought Maxi Hughes and brought him close. Um, dismantled him in two rounds. And I've always said that I want to be involved in the biggest fights, the biggest nights. Probably at a certain stage in my career, I'm going to lose a fight. But I want to. The reason I'll probably lose a fight is because I'm testing the waters all the time. If I win a lightweight title, one three five, give me the unification straight away. Let's move up and try and win two. Let's move up and try and win three. I'm never comfortable. I want to just keep seeing if if I knock Vasquez out in the first round on Saturday night, I want to go again next week. Get me a fight on the I'm going to the boy for the Pro Bellum show. Get me a fight on there. I want to go <laughs> again because I'm never I just yeah. want to keep pushing and pushing. Um 
I want this is a short career boxing is over at 31, 32 please God and make enough money win enough titles I'm out here in 6 years so I want to just do as much as possible in that time and then get out be happy have my health and uh, sail off into the sunset then but <laughs> I just want to I want to do as much as possible while uh, it's a short career and I think we need to save it and I'm gonna, there's going to be a lot of Irish fighters in a couple of years goes maybe I should have took that Myself and Joe did it. We stood, we stepped up. We took the fight. I don't believe Joe lost any credibility because I am going to move on to bigger and better things. I've won the European WBO. I'm, I'm pushing on to world titles, so he can come back and, and campaign again domestically and, and rebuild if he wanted to. But I don't think you lose much from from taking these domestic clashes. And I think not enough Irish fighters step up and take them I think we see we think we need to see more of it there's too many people out there protecting O's fighting bin men paying two and a half three grand to fight a guy with two wins and 40 losses yeah. so that you can tell all their mates they're a professional fighter and it just doesn't really sit well with me yeah, they're putting yeah. it up on Instagram they're taking sponsorships off people and look I understand that that's the way the world is going we're more on social media we're more on screens but I'm, I'm a fighter yeah. I was born a fighter I'm Five years of five years of age sparring my brother in my sitting room. I'm in a boxing club since I'm seven. I am built this way for the last twenty years, so I just want to fight. And it's a bit, it's sometimes a little bit insulting when you see people trying to play the social media card that I know aren't. They're not real fighters, you know. I don't believe they're yeah. real fighters. But sorry, I went on a rant there. No, that's but, interesting. Uh, that's interesting. We see a lot of it in the Irish scene at the minute. I believe there's a lot of, and and the last couple of years we've seen a lot of people turn over and what did they have you might have two three four fights they get sick of paying for the fights then all of a sudden you have to step up and take your 50 50 because you only get to a certain point and then you have to take your 50 50 and then they just retire and go off into the sunset because it's just ego test yourself and see where you're at and i believe we could do well with like a little league in ireland because there's a lot of lads who aren't a level and they're trying to tell, they're trying to fool people saying that they're A-level. Let's all just agree and accept we're B-level fighters. Not me, I'm A-level. B- <laughs> they're B-level fighters. Let's have a league, let's see who comes out on top. Yeah. And then the winner, winner moves on, you know, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think we need to see more Irish fighting Irish like in Irish championships when you're an amateur you have to win the Kildare Leagues then the Leinsters then the Irish you have to go through the system you have to prove you're the best in Kildare before you win Leinster. the best in Leinster yeah. then you prove you're the best in Ireland let's just fight each other before we go calling fucking mad names on social media and all this but yeah sorry for the ramp but <laughs> no, I actually agree with a lot of what you said there to be honest I think that it is an issue and I've said this to a lot of guys in on that like I'm not going to say they're A or B or C or whatever class of fighter but let's say they're guys on the Irish scene, they're local, they're more local level fighters, right? But my thing is, why not? I, I think there's, I like your idea of the league system almost, or some form of that, like a it's UFC everybody model everybody almost. You know, they all fight each other, right? Listen, we're, them guys are paying two and a half, three grand to fight lads, so why not just fight once a month for free? It's not costing you money. So, I don't, I don't know how it works with shows, with insurance, with, licenses and all this but let's just set up a little league there where we can if you if you're paying a, a journeyman two and a half grand to come over from Hungary and the other guy is paying the journeyman two and a half grand to come over from Hungary and all of a sudden the two journeymen pull out the two fighters are off the show but they won't ever step in and go we're the same weight let's just fight each other and see who's the best and these guys I'm talking about I'm not being disrespectful but they're like winning novice titles in in the Irish amateurs you know what I mean so yeah you're not going to go on and win world titles and let's just accept that that yeah. 0.1% of us go on and win world titles you know what I mean so yeah. I think we, we do need a, a system like a system in Ireland where the best the, we all fight each other then the best comes out on top and I would have been happy to do that when I started off as a pro with all the lightweights yeah. in Ireland let's all jump in a league let's jump in a, in a last man standing on a night and let's see who's who's yeah who's number one and then number one goes on and takes a step up or whatever but I don't know yeah I think something needs to change and people are just faking for for a social media account that and you're going to retire when you're 31, 32 and go 
should have fought this fella, should have fought that fella, sitting in a bar going, I used to be a professional boxer, I could have done this, I could have done that. I'm in this game, if I lose at some stage, I lose, but I'm testing myself. I'm pushing limits to see where I can go, and I work hard, and that's where I get my confidence from, because I work extremely hard every day. So I believe I can afford to say that because of how hard I work. Yeah. Um, so that's where my confidence comes from. I'm, try- I'm not trying to come across arrogant or disrespectful or mm. anything like that. I-, I work extremely hard. I think I've been proven that I can, I can uh, operate at them levels. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Why do you think guys at the local level don't want to step in and fight each other? And now I think there might be. Th- it's starting. The tide is starting to turn a little bit now. I think. With the likes of Burkey and Morrissey fighting each other, that's Robbie Burke and Jamie Morrissey. Yeah, lads, low heavy. Two real fighters. I know the two lads personally, and they've been in the gym. We've spa- I don't know if we've sparred Jamie personally. Sparred Burkey. Jamie sparred a couple of lads in the gym. I class them two lads as real fighters. But there's a lot of people out there. It's just the ego. I have this O, and I'm afraid to lose it. And I know that I'm not. I'm not. A level, so I don't want to. I feel like I'm not secure enough to get in there, and I've, I'm not confident enough to test myself against a guy who might beat me because somebody might think of me different. I'm fighting a former world champion on on Saturday night, completely 100 million percent confident I'm going to beat him. But this is boxing. There's a possibility that he gets in there and beats me. But I'm I'm testing myself. I'm 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 getting in the mind frame of. I could lose this fight so that's what makes me work so hard I, yeah. if I don't show up 100% I could lose this fight so I need to work extremely hard and that's why I'm coming to fight week this week with 100% confidence in myself because I've worked so hard because I'm waking up 8 weeks out from the fight in the morning going if I don't do this Vasquez is going to beat me so I believe that's the mindset that you have to have and after this mi- after this victory on Saturday not only will I not be comfortable or not be content my next fight I see them waking up in the morning. They're going to the gym. I, I'm, I'm seeing what they're doing. I know if I don't work hard and push harder in my next camp than I did in this camp, there's a possibility that I lose it. And maybe that's not true. Maybe I would still win it. But to me, to progress, I need to... And I always say after every camp, I couldn't have done any more. And then the next camp, I'll always find the extra 1%. I'll always find the extra few reps because that's what we need to, yeah. to grow and to push on. That kind of fear and drive you that kind of pushes fear. you. You need fear because I've got into fights. I've I fought before. I was meant to fight Sultan Zabo in my fourth fight, and he pulled out. I ended up fighting Renaldo Kahina. Um, but I was in the change room, and I, I remember thinking, if I have the worst night of my life that I've ever had here, he's not going to beat me. So there was no fear there, and I think when I walked to the to the venue or when I arrive at the venue on Saturday night I'm going to walk into the change room and go okay switch on here because if you don't switch on he's going to switch on and he's going to get his hand raised so I need it's that fear element that if you're not on 100% you're not on your game you're getting found out here tonight and I believe that's what brings the best out in us this is why I'm going to believe I have the, the best performance in my career on Saturday night because that's that fear element I'm stepping up he's a former world champion people are going People are backing me, but they're going, mm, is this a step too early? Is this a step too far too early? And I'm looking forward. I've getting in there to, with something to prove on Saturday night. So I believe you need to kind of have that little chip on your shoulder. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's, it's def- I think the fear, you, see, you hear a lot of people talking about it, that fear element is super important in terms of performance mm-hmm. for boxers because boxers are not afraid to get in and have the actual fight itself. It's about kind of fear of losing and... You know what I mean? The fear of the result rather than having a fight. Like Yeah, it's ego and status more than anything else. We, I'm 13 and oh, I obviously I want to stay on the field. I want to keep that status. I believe I work so hard in the gym and I'm, I pride myself on nobody beats me in the gym. If we're in a running session, nobody beats me. If you've pushed 200 kilos on that prowler push, I'm pushing 210. That's, that's my way of thinking. So when you get in there, and there's a possibility of it's me or him. That's my last thought. When I get into a ring, I look across the ring, I see Miguel Vasquez on Saturday night, I say, OK, it's you or him tonight. Who's it going to be? You know what I mean? And it's yeah. that decision. And I think it's... it's impo- For me, I have control over it. So 
I know I've put in the work on going to the ring on Saturday night, no doubt in my mind that I've had no injuries in this camp. Preparation couldn't have went any better. I did the running sessions. I did the ice bats when I didn't want to do the ice bats. I went to yoga. I've seen my sports psychologist. I've got... My days are down to a tee from 9 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock in the evening till I go to bed. My days are structured Monday to Friday. I know what I'm doing. I, I live the lifestyle. So when I, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon before I go to that venue, I'll have a te- 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 checklist sorry, of 20 things in my notebook in my room. And I'll tick every one of them. And when I tick every one of them, I walk to the venue. If I come back on the wrong side of the decision, I've done everything I can possibly do. So when I do everything I can possibly do, I know I'm not going to come out on the other side. I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to come out victorious. So like I said, that's where I get my confidence from. Yeah. Last thing, because you need to go and do a check weight. Um, you're fighting on a matchroom car. It's your first one. Eddie Hearn is the kind of consensus biggest promoter in the world at the moment. He seems to be the guy who's able to push guys into the limelight and you know, give them that, you know, bring the finances, bring the, the pr- literally the promotion, bring the, the fame and et cetera, et cetera. Is it, are you driven to, to perform here kind of in a way for, for him and to kind of maybe earn a contract? Uh, does that play, not that it, you think about it, but is that something that you that you want to do? Uh, possibly, yeah. Not for Eddie, for the platform, I think. The platform that, obviously, Eddie is the man that has the platform, but for yeah. me, it's, it's all the eyes that's tuning in. It's, it's the zone. It's the zone. It's I believe from from um, this height that I'm supposed to be in the spotlight, and it's a, it's a it's a higher belief than me that I believe that I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be involved in the biggest nights. Um, so it's it's the fans and the spotlight and myself that I want to impress. I want to uh, get in there and prove to myself that all this belief and all this training. It is, you are right, you are right following this, you are right, you're getting up at fucking nine o'clock in the morning and going doing an ice bath and getting home at nine o'clock in the evening and fucked and still going to yoga when you're tired and blah, 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 you're, it, trust it, you're, it, it is working, you know what I mean, and after every win and every big performance, I get back after it, I take a sigh of relief and I go, yeah, you're on the right road, it is working, so I believe in that, um, as far as the platform and Eddie, yeah, Eddie, I believe I'm going to have options after after um, Saturday night. I've got a couple of different offers, different promoters interested. Okay. So, I'm in a win on Saturday night catapults me and I'm in a very, very good position after Saturday night. So, um, like I said, from the start of, of my career, I've got, I believe I've got the best team in world boxing, the most powerful team in world boxing guiding me. Um, and yeah, I I don't really need to worry about signing with needing to put on a big performance to impress this promoter or to get a signing deal with this promoter. My team, I 